Hi all, now I am going to talk on a concept regarding equivalence in macroeconomic policy and uh, a concept related to public spending. The traditional view of government debt presumes that when the government cut taxes and run a budget deficit, consumers respond to the higher after tax income by spending more. An alternative view called Ricardian equivalence questions this presumption. According to the Ricardian view, consumers are forward-looking and therefore base their spending decision not only on their current income but also on their expected future income. The Ricardian view of government debt applies the logic of forward-looking consumer to analyzing the effect of physical policy. The basic logic of Ricardian equivalence explains that consider the response of a forward-looking consumer to the tax cut that the Central Budget Committee is considering. The consumer might reason as follows. The government is cutting taxes without any plan to reduce the government spending. Does this policy alter my set of opportunities? Am I richer because of this tax cut? Should I consume more or maybe not? The government is financing the tax cut by running a budget deficit. At some point in the future, the government will have to raise the tax to pay off the debt and accumulated interest. So the policy really represents a tax cut today coupled with a tax hike in the future. The tax cut merely gives me a transitory income that eventually will be taken back. I am not any better off, so I will leave my consumption unchanged. Does the forward-looking consumer understand that the government borrowing today means higher taxes in the future? A tax cut financed by the government debt does not reduce the tax burden, it merely reschedules it. It therefore should not encourage the consumers to spend more. One can view this argument in another way, suppose the government borrows $1,000 from the typical citizen to give that citizen a $1,000 tax cut. In essence, this policy is same as giving the citizen a $1,000 government bond as a gift. One side of bond says the government owes you, the bondholder, a $1,000 plus interest. On the other side, it says, yes, you are the taxpayer, owe the government $1,000 plus the interest. Overall, the gift of a bond from the government to the typical citizen does not make the citizen richer or poor because the value of the bond is offset by the value of the future tax liability. The general principle is that the government debt is equivalent to future taxes and if consumers are sufficiently forward-looking, future taxes are equivalent to current taxes. Hence, financing the government by debt is equivalent to financing it by taxes. This view is called Ricardian equivalence after the famous 19th century economist David Ricardo because he is the first one noted this theoretical argument. The implication of Ricardian equivalence is that the debt financed tax cut leaves consumption unaffected. Households save the extra disposable income to pay the future tax liability that the tax cut implies. This increase in private saving exactly offsets the decrease in public saving. The tax cut therefore has none of the effect that the traditional analysis predicts. The logic of Ricardian equivalence does not mean that all changes in the physical policy are irrelevant. Changes in the physical policy do influence consumer spending if they influence present or future government purchases. For example, suppose the government cut taxes today because it plans to reduce government purchase in the future. If the consumer understands that this tax cut does not require an increase in future taxes, he feels richer and raises his consumption. But note that it is the reduction in government purchase rather than the reduction in taxes that stimulates consumption. The announcement of a future reduction in government purchases would raise consumption today even if current taxes were unchanged because it would imply lower taxes at some time in the future. Consumers and the uh, attitude 
towards this uh, future taxes. The essence of the recurring view is that when the people choose the level of consumption, they rationally look ahead to the future tax implied by the government debt. But how forward-looking are consumers? Defenders of this uh, traditional view of government debt believes that the prospect of future tax does not have as large an influence on current consumption as the Ricardian view assumes. Here are some of their arguments. The f one of the important concepts they highlight is the myopia. The proponents of the Ricardian view of physical policy assume that people are rational when making such decision as choosing how much of their income to consume and how much to save. When the government borrows to pay for current spending, rational consumers look ahead to the future taxes required to support this uh, debt. Thus, the recurring view presumes that people have substantial knowledge and foresight. One possible argument for the traditional view of tax cut is that people are short-sighted, perhaps because they do not fully comprehend the implications of government budget deficit. It is possible that some people follow simple and not fully rational rule of thumb when choosing how much to save. Suppose for example that a person acts on the assumption that future taxes will be the same as the current taxes. This person will fail to take account the future changes in taxes required by the current government policies. A debt to finance tax cut will lead this person to believe that his lifetime income has increased even if it has not. The tax cut will therefore lead to higher consumption and lower national saving. Another important uh, concept is the borrowing constraint. The recurring view of government debt assumes that consumers base their spending not on their current income but on their lifetime income which includes both current and expected future income. According to the Ricardian view, a debt finance tax cut increases current income but it does not alter lifetime income or consumption. Advocates of the traditional view of government debt argues that current income is more important than the lifetime income for those consumers who face binding borrowing constraints. A borrowing constraint is a limit on how much an individual can borrow from banks or other financial institutions. A person who would like to consume more than his current income allows, perhaps because he expects higher income in the future, has to do so by borrowing. If he cannot borrow to finance current consumption or can borrow only a limited amount, his current income determines his spending regardless of what his lifetime income might be. In this case, the debt to finance tax cut raises current income and thus consumption, even though future income will be lower. In essence, when the government cut current taxes and raises future taxes, it is giving taxpayer a loan. For a person who wanted to obtain a loan but was unable to, the tax cut expands his opportunity and stimulates consumption.